Hey guys, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. And today I want to show you something I'm really excited about um, because I'm a nerd and I like playing a, a video game or two uh, from time to time. And I also love me some video editing and I also love using things for what they aren't supposed to be used for. And I want to show you guys a really cool way to turn just about any game controller into a super sweet video editing control surface. Honestly, this looks kind of weird, but it's freaking awesome. And you can actually edit really, really fast with this if you set it up right. This is a controller from Logitech. It's like 25 bucks at Best Buy. Basically all the same controls as an Xbox controller. It just looks more like a PS2 controller or something. Anyhow, this is a super nice controller and it's really cheap. So check this out. Here I am in Premiere and I've mapped the buttons on my controller to pretty much do keyboard shortcuts. And so here's what we can do. I can go in between my clips using up and down on the D-pad. I can hit play and pause by hitting A. And I can do ripple edits with my shoulder buttons here. So I can just hit this to do ripple deletes. I can hit back to undo. Start to, of course, save because you know, you pause and save, you get it, cool. Anywho, um, so up and down goes in between clips. Left and right is like frame advance. My right stick, I have my view, and so I can zoom in and out. And if I click in the middle, it zooms all the way out. My left stick is my jog and shuttle controls, so I can go back and forth really quickly. If I hit in the middle, it stops it. X is select the clip under the playhead. Y is select the clip and delete it. And this also works for ripple deletes. If I go up and down on my left stick, this zooms in my audio. So that's it for the basics, but I also have layers. And so what I can do is hit my left trigger or right trigger, and this will switch what all of the buttons do. So this is pretty sweet. If I want to select a clip, I can just hit X. I can hold down my left trigger and that brings in my clip controls. And if I hit B, I can enable and disable the clip. If I'm on an audio clip, select it, push down my left trigger and hit X, and this brings up my audio gain. And now I can hit up and down to adjust the audio gain and just hit A to confirm. And I can adjust the level of my audio. So I'll just turn down some of these whooshes here. And if I hold down my right trigger, this changes to mouse mode and I can move around the mouse with the analog stick and click with the button part. So that's all fine and good, but does it actually make you edit faster? Well, I don't know, how about I punch you in the face? Let's see how fast I can trim all of these clips, turn down my audio, and get a good edit here. So pretty simple edits, but it gives you an idea of how fast you can move along once you kind of get used to using this, especially if it's kind of simple trimming and just cutting out time. This is a really fun way to work. So to set this up, you have to download the drivers for the controller, which I got at logitech.com. And to map the controller buttons to the keystrokes, I got a little utility called XPatter. Now they have a paid version of this, but they also have an older version that's still freeware. And so if you Google XPatter free, you should be able to get it for free. And you can use this with like just about any type of controller. You can use an Xbox controller. You can use like some old controller from back in the day. And you can map the different buttons on the controller to keystrokes. So here's my layout and I'll save this layout and these images and stuff and put them in a link in the description below for you to download and use if you want to. Pretty much what you do to set it up is plug in your controller and then it asks you what all the buttons are, where to put them, and you can set it up and map all the buttons to the different keystrokes. And you also have different control sets. And each set is a bunch of mappings for the different buttons on your controller. So the first set is your default. So that's what you're using all the time. And you can assign a button to switch to a different set temporarily. So what I did was set my triggers to switch to different sets. So the left trigger switches to the second set, which adjusts my clip controls and the right trigger switches to another set where I have my mouse mapped. 
And you can have up to eight sets and you can stack them and do all sorts of weird things. Um, and you can get a ton of control, even from just a few buttons using this. So this is pretty sweet. So all I did with this is just figure out what I wanted to do in Premiere and look up the keyboard shortcut using the keyboard shortcuts preferences. And I mapped each button to the keyboard shortcuts. And this will work with any program too. This will work with Premiere, with Resolve, with like Illustrator, who knows, everything. And this is pretty much only limited to what the app will let you control with the keyboard. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure to let me know by hitting like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And for more post-production tutorials, editing tutorials, color grading tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube where you currently are. My name is Casey Ferris. Thanks for watching.